After being confronted by Chris, Buchanan tries to blame his depravity on the PTSD he got during his military time in Iraq. Although despite this I'm impediment, sorry, bro. Buchanan I'm still bro, served bro, three bro, years bro. in prison. Bro, I don't get, I don't care what nobody says, bro. Trying to blame PTSD on being a it's crazy. Hey, I went to war. I heard saw a lot of guns. They were shooting guns. So it made me like under Huh? Say that out loud to yourself and, and really sit there and marinate and what the f you just said. This is Sunny V2's Where Are the Chris Hansen Today? I don't know, but we about to find out. This video will cover exactly Dang. what happened to the six most notable creeps from Hansen vs. And we're going to begin by talking about the math tutor Mike Manzi, who's had his life pretty much ruined as a result of the I'm Chris Hansen, No You're Not episode. After arriving at the Sting House, Mike bumped into Chris immediately before trying to make the excuse that he was simply making sure that the 13 year old girl was safe inside her house. After desperately attempting to leave, Mike was arrested, taken back to the police station, and interrogated for approximately 35 minutes. After which, the episode ends with the explanation that because Mike's discussion was pretty clean prior to the meetup, he was only sentenced to three years probation, meaning that he avoided any time in prison and wasn't Damn. registered on any unsavory lists. However, this isn't to say that Mike's life has been easy ever since the episode went live. In late 2021, a conversation was leaked with one of the show's editors, who explained that the head of security, Ron Knight, was actually Mike Manzi's uncle, and that there is a part that never aired, where Manzi is insisting to Knight to let him go because he's known Manzi since birth. This what? is apparently why Manzi made such an effort to convince the crew to let him leave peacefully, yet his uncle told Manzi the best thing he could do is go through the garage and remain silent, which Manzi obviously didn't do. As a result of the- Oh, wow. Your uncle? Like, I get, I, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, we appreciate you for getting, for getting him off the streets, but damn, the uncle? The uncle is crazy, I ain't gonna lie. Cause it, right, my own family? Hey man, listen. The episode Mike now hates his uncle, which has more than likely led to the decline of Manzi's other family relationships. However, the most interesting thing revealed in the message exchange was that Manzi was an avid watcher of TCAP back in the day, which explains why he recognized Chris Hansen immediately. Mike Damn. has since been found on a felony dating site, as well as on Facebook under a different name, where a Reddit user was able to get this picture, as well as apparently have a conversation with Mike, who stated that he gets recognized very often, and that Mike actually seems like a very chilled out dude. On Chris Hansen's Damn. podcast, Chris explained that Mike is no longer working in education. As far as we know, he is not tutoring or teaching anywhere. He lives with his parents. Which would explain two recently surfaced photos of Mike working in a retail job, representing a pretty significant fall since tutoring for some of Connecticut's wealthiest families. However, Damn. Mike still got off lightly in comparison. Damn, whole life ruined for real. Cause you want, yo, like, I, I don't understand people, bro. You, you really be putting your whole life on the line because you're creepy. Like, you have a whole lot going for you. And you don't understand, dang, this might jeopardize everything I have going for me. I might lose everything I got going. It, and it can always, bro, people be like, it can't get worse. It can. Even if you weren't living extravagant and doing all these crazy things, imagine you, you working a real regular job, making regular amounts of money, you know what I'm saying, doing regular stuff, and then now you can't be around kids. You can't be in certain school zones. You'll get arrested. You're in the registry. You know, like, bro, your whole life, like you living a regular life and you think it's not all that great can actually get worse by just doing weird shit. It can get worse. Like, please realize that to John Dupee, who as a result of his appearance on the show has now become homeless. John walked into the sting house without saying a word and was so creepy that simply standing next to him was enough to terrify the decoy, yet she apparently had nothing to worry about as he stated that he was only there to watch the football. After revealing that John was simultaneously talking to more than one minor, he was arrested, interrogated, and given a notice to appear in court where he'd be- Damn. Uh, more, more, hey, more than one is crazy. He was trying to have, he was trying to have like a, a, a Hall of Fame, like starting five for real. Like you can't be serious. You was trying to have a, a starting five? Sir, come on. 
I be for real. Be trolled and heckled by the attendees as he pleaded guilty. And the judge actually in the case had to order the crowd to be quiet, to be orderly, because they had figured out who he was and what he was being accused of, what he was pleading guilty to. John Doe P was given an eight year prison sentence beginning Damn. in August 2016, although this certainly suck, isn't where the story ends. Only four months into his prison term, John's brother and sister were both killed in a car accident, which happened Ooh. on the very same street where the sting house was located. And in case Damn! Nah. Oh, nah. Oh, no. Accused of what he was pleading guilty. The judge actually in the case had to order the crowd to be quiet to be or because they had figured out who he was and was being accused of. Uh, uh. Two. John Doe P was given an eight year prison sentence beginning in August 2016, although this certainly isn't where the story ends. Only four months into. No, no, no. Definitely don't. I would not wish wish death upon anybody that was not deserving of it but these two people were probably had no clue about his actions or anything like that it was just it's it's just uh, it's probably just unfortunate as hell and like these people probably had nothing to do with what he got going on or they'd be in jail too and and not had died in a car accident, so you know it's just unfortunate as hell. Into his prison term, John's brother and sister were both killed in a car accident, which happened on the very same street where the sting house was located. And in case losing both of his siblings wasn't bad enough, there are unconfirmed anecdotes that John was also disowned by his parents Damn. after the episode went live. He was released from prison on the 24th of July, 2018, serving just two years out of his eight year sentence. Yet after being released, John was forced to register on a- Man only served two years of an eight year sentence, bro. What is the point of sentencing this many years if they're not going to serve due to dang time? Uh. Public offender list, which displayed his address as a Connecticut homeless shelter. After three years in the shelter, John was able to move into a group house. Although in October 2021, only two months after moving out of the homeless wow. shelter, John violated his probation in an unspecified way and was sent back to prison for another year and two months. Since his release in December 2022, John has been residing in a shelter for recovering addicts. Although John Dupee isn't the only person on this list who's been back to prison, as Josh a cologne also recently violated his probe catches a plumber on the prowl that is a crazy title <laughs> hey hey listen no listen no that is a that is a great title bro if anything if chris hansen knew how to do anything it was to be a freaking youtuber damn I'm, I, I scroll i see that i'm clicking i ain't gonna lie <laughs> i'm clicking damn that's a good title hold on let me see what he's talking about Got to. <laughs> Gotta click, for real. Probation. Joshua was the New York plumber who locked the door behind him after entering the sting house, oh. stating that his biggest nightmare was ending up... Oh, locking the door behind him is crazy. Oh, you had intentions. You had intentions. ...on a Chris Hansen episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, no! My man said his biggest... Uh, he walks into a Chris Hansen sting and says his biggest fear is being on a Chris Hansen sting. Hey, sucks to suck. <laughs> that is your right, worst nightmare happening right now. It sucks to suck, bro. Stinghouse stating that his biggest nightmare was ending up on a Chris Hansen episode. After Josh comes out of the bathroom, Chris is already there waiting for him. I know who you are. You know who I am? Yes. And as a result, Josh is unbelievably honest, laying out his intentions immediately. After being taken back to the station, Damn. he'd incredibly admit that this wasn't the first time that he'd met up with someone under age, which eventually helped the court to secure Damn. a seven-year prison sentence. After the sting happened, but before Josh went to prison, he was still working as a plumber and would admit to a co-worker that he was very remorseful and would happily take back his crazy Russian ex, then go back to that house with Chris Hansen. On his really bad days, he would talk about how he doesn't want to die alone and that he knows that he'll never have a semblance of a normal life again. Well, Josh was sent to prison a few months later in early 2016 and would serve three years out of his seven year sentence. However, this wouldn't be the last time that Josh ended up behind bars. Wh wait, in September what? 2020, approximately one year after being released from his first prison stint, a post was made to the TCAP forum stating, Joshua Clone was convicted yesterday after spending a few months in prison for a probation violation. Four years jail, execution suspended after six 
six months, probation nine years. Wow. This guy will never learn. Josh's second prison term came to an end in March 2021, after which his former co-worker and friend took to Reddit to explain the reason for the sentence. He contacted me after he got out of prison for a second time, letting me know that he'd been framed. Apparently he wasn't allowed to have any pictures of any children on his phone. His sister shared a picture of his niece in a chat that he was in and he got locked up for it, his explanation. Interestingly, wow. if you now search Josh's name on an inmate search engine, it states that Joshua Cologne is or was recently an inmate currently at the Connecticut Department of Corrections, CTDOC, located in Weather... Damn, that sucks. You can't even have pictures of kids on your phone, not even your niece. They let the nigga... Uh, bro, like, I, I don't feel bad, but then shit like... But like, I... I don't know, man. I don't know. Because it's like, damn, you can't even have a picture of your niece on your phone. But damn, you're the reason why you can't have a picture of your niece on your phone. So like, you know, like you're the reason why you can't have a picture of your niece. But damn, that sucks. You can't even, bro, like, right. You can't, can't even probably have a picture of your own kids on your phone. Can't even have kids because technically you can't be around them. So like, it sucks. Like, damn, that sucks. But like, you did it. So sucks to suck. Hey, Rex, Rex. For CT, leading many to believe that Josh is now back in prison for a third time. Again? But what happened to the wealthy accountant who Chris recognized from the train? His name was Charles Lawrence, and after walking into the Sting House, the following exchange occurred. Now, Chris, what are you doing? But this is the first time I've caught anyone who I know. After wow. which Charles was arrested and taken back to the station. <laughs> My man said, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what are you what are you doing here what are you what are you doing here <laughs> bro imagine you walk out to see a predator and it's someone you know bro oh my god for an interview throughout the interrogation charles made the hilarious claim that because of his poor eyesight he read the decoy's age as 18 instead of 13. every time he was 18 my eye got scratched my glasses were fit i'm looking at but he said 18. My eye got scratched in my glasses. I thought I saw 18. So because, bro, like, right, specifically 18? Specifically. I thought I saw 18. Specifically. Oh, just just right at the age of consent. That's what you saw? With your eye scratched? Oh, okay. You saw what you wanted to see, my brother. I, swear to God, I would never, ever in my entire life meet a 13-year-old. However, the judge wasn't... You was out there to meet a 13 year old and you thought it said 18 because your glasses and your eye was scratched? Oh, God. Oh, they, oh, they just be lying, bro. Dumb enough to buy this excuse, who sentenced Lawrence to two years in prison, which he'd served between June 2016 and June 2018. Whilst in prison, the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, under which Lawrence was employed, confirmed that Mr. Lawrence's AICPA membership was terminated, effective May 25th, 2007. Wait, wait. So he got he got convicted in 2016. It took y'all a whole year to fire this man? Bro, we don't care. I'm trying to be public servants. Get the fuck. He should have fired the nigga when he got convicted. Fuck out of here. 17 because of a final judgment of conviction for a crime punishable by imprisonment for more than one year. Chris also mentioned that Charles had a second job as a commercial real estate agent, and after finding Charles's LinkedIn, it states that he's the president of a company called Lawrence Real Estate Enterprises Inc., which is still active today and lists Charles as the company's CEO. Damn. However, Chris did mention on his podcast that Charles had some issues with keeping his license. I'm not clear as to whether or not he's still involved in commercial real estate. There was an issue with his license after his conviction, after he pleaded. Guilty. Although even if he was able to, it's unlikely that Charles would get much work these days given his reputation. In May 2021, a post was made to Reddit explaining that they saw Charles Lawrence living in an over 55s complex, which has been confirmed as true after looking up the address listed on his public offender registry. This Damn. page also shows the most recent photo of him taken in mid-2018, exhausting all of the information that we have on Charles Lawrence. Hey, psst. I'm not one to uh gossip but i heard you wasn't following me on twitter and instagram and you wasn't updated when i wasn't able to post on youtube and you thought i was gone so follow me on twitter and instagram it's that simple enjoy the rest of it
Damn. However, we've got plenty of dirt on the now infamous Stephen Buchanan, who gained notoriety for showing up to the Sting house with duct tape, a camera, and various weapons in his car. This was extra terrifying as after arriving at the house, he refused to enter and rather tried to coax the decoy into getting into his vehicle. Do you want to come in? Do you want to go? Can you just like come in and chat? Wait, 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 wait. Say that one more time. It was extra terrifying as after arriving at the house, he refused to enter and rather try to coax the decoy into getting into his vehicle. Do you want to come in? Do you want to go? Can you just like come in and chat for a little bit? What do you want to do? I'll show you around first, bro. You got some food if you want. You want to show you around? Can you watch a movie? What about, what about going to the movie? After being confronted by Chris, Buchanan tries to blame his depravity on the PTSD he got during his military time in Iraq. Although despite this I'm impediment, sorry, bro. Buchanan I'm still bro, served bro, three bro, years bro. in prison. Bro, I don't get I don't care what nobody says, bro. Trying to blame PTSD on being a predator is crazy. Hey, I went to war. I heard saw a lot of guns. They were shooting guns. So it made me like underage kids, huh? Say that out loud to yourself and, and really sit there and marinate and what the fuck you just said. Yo, PTSD from a war and being in the military made you like kids? Like, be for real. After which fans of the show began to notice that the story he shared with Chris wasn't entirely accurate. A user by the name of Bud1985 took to Reddit in a post reading, Stephen Buchanan, this took me a good hour of searching through old pics from Iraq, but I finally found it. I served with his turd. Bud continued in the comments by stating, when he was active duty, he was a tank mechanic. And how do I know this? He was my tanks mechanic. He would do maintenance on it in the motor pool every Monday. He never went on a single mission. He never <laughs> seen a minute of combat. He may have been through some mortifier, but that's it. It pissed me off so bad when I heard him blame it on PTSD. You first, bro, you had no motion. You was not outside. You was not in the mix. Talk about some PTSD, Nick. You was not in the mix. Nowhere, not never, not never ever in the mix. PTSD. PTSD's nuts. Shut up, you liar. Go to jail. Oh my god. Oh my god. That that is, that hey man. That pissed me off too bad, bro. What? The most recent photo of Stephen Buchanan comes from July 2022, which accompanies a further update from Chris Hansen's podcast. And as far as we can tell, he still lives in Connecticut with his parents, and he's working driving a, a large truck. Also explaining that he was able to have a conversation with Stephen's father. I called the number we had for Stephen Buchanan, and a man picked up, and it, it actually sounded a little bit like Stephen Buchanan, and I, I asked for Stephen. Right away, the man said, is this Chris Hansen? And I said, yes, it is. This is why are you calling? I said, I'm calling for Stephen Buchanan, and, and the father had the tone of a man exasperated with having to deal with the circumstances around his son. He told me that Stephen has moved on with his life and essentially that he wants to only look forward and then the senior Buchanan asked that I never call the number again. But while Stephen wow. has done a pretty good job of moving on with his life, this has been significantly more difficult for Jeff Sokol, who became arguably the most notable predator in Chris Hansen history after bringing a pepperoni pizza to the Fairfield Stinghouse. The iconic episode the became guy. etched in YouTube history History, as Jeff seems so relaxed about the confrontation that he was only able to focus on his dinner. I want to know a little bit more about you first. Can I eat first? After Jeff spent 16 minutes demolishing his pizza, he'd offer Chris a slice on the way out. You can take your pizza if you like. You want a slice? I'm good, thank you. And even after being taken back to the station, Jeff maintained the attitude that he hadn't done anything wrong, according to a source who was at the station with him. He kept his cool. He was pretty healthy and bad. He was going to be able to get out of this be able to get a good lawyer and uh, really take care of his case. While Jeff seemed confident huh. that he wouldn't receive any charges, this didn't alter his reality, as after going through three different lawyers, he'd be sentenced to two and a half years in prison beginning hey, on the 27th of May, 2017. Whilst locked up, the Jeff Sokol episode became so popular that fans of the show tracked That's Southwestern Connecticut pizza, bro. I live near town. The place he got it from is called Planet Pizza down the restaurant from which the pizza had been ordered and began to visit the restaurant asking for the exact same pizza that Jeff had gotten. That's actually weird. I'm not gonna lie. You want, why are you doing that? You're going to a pizza store to order pizza. Bro, that pizza place had nothing to do with him. He was just eating pizza. You, re you really went there and said, let me get the, the order that this guy ordered, huh? <laughs> 
The restaurant has since had hundreds of positive reviews, many of which subtle- I mean, it did help the restaurant, so, uh, you know, but that's that's still weird. Referencing the Jeff Sokol incident, and according to an email sent to us by a fan, the restaurant had to eventually ask people to stop asking for the Sokol special, that's although weird. there doesn't actually seem to be any evidence for this claim. By the time Jeff was released from prison in June 2019, his appearance on the show had racked up a view count in the tens of millions, Jesus. leading Jeff to try and change his name legally to Sonny Derek Porter. Sokol actually went to court and petitioned to change his name to Sonny Derek Porter. A few years ago, I was arrested as a part of a sting operation trying to meet a girl oh. who was underage. The sting was part of a nationally syndicated TV show, Crime Watch Daily, Hanson vs. Predator. This episode is now available online, along with many other troll videos and nasty comments from fans of the show. In the aftermath, I've experienced humiliation, harassment, and- Des uh, Deserved. Like, bro, if they granted this man his name change, bro. Like, bro, that's that's essentially giving him a new identity. No, bro. How, why do you, what do you, bro, you do not deserve a name change. If you, if you went out your way to meet someone underage and got publicly humiliated for it, you deserve that. Take your, take that, take that to the chin, bro. You better eat that. Embarrassment. One could argue that this was justified, but I've surely lived with much remorse since the arrest. Don't care. Since my current name will always be linked via a simple internet search, Don't care. I'm requesting authorization to change my name. I'm working hard to be a better Don't person care. overall and making a sincere effort to treat everyone with respect. I hope to meet new friends and acquaintances and wish not to be judged based on one gigantic mistake I Don't made care. a few years ago. I hope to be judged for the person I really am, the person I am today. More than anything, I would like a second chance at a happy and safe life however oh. the name change was eventually rejected uh -huh. don't care bozo oh, no. keep your name and keep the 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 freaky creepy shit that come with it don't care which only led to more trolling it was then discovered that jeff had been forced to sell his apartment and according to this reddit comment which isn't the best evidence jeff moved in with his parents in blank it seems like he comes from a pretty affluent family so he probably just mooches from his parents and stays low key the most recent photo of him comes from early 2021 which unfortunately marks the final piece oh of bro you look like you still do creepy stuff i'm not gonna lie of information we have on Jeff Sokol because despite being one of the show's most notable people, he certainly kept one of the lowest profiles. Hey, W video. Man look creepy as hell for real. He do. Why his face like that? He looked like he's still DMing kids. Nah, he said he looked like Jimmy Kimmel. All right, man. But that was the end of Sunny V2. Hope you and uh, hope you enjoyed, man. You know, W video.